What's going on, everybody? What are you guys doing? Oh, you brought me a treasure. What's up, Smeagol? Well, oh, here's the sleeping man. You've been, you've been busy this morning already, haven't you? He said, Dad, I'm a teenager. I've been trying to sleep. I like sleeping in in the morning. He's already been uh, up and alert this morning. Where you know, Skeeter? Where you know, Skeet? Leave him go along. He's trying to get his uh, beauty sleep. So, uh, yeah, I got to say, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Hidden Heights Farm. We got a nice, cool, brisk morning. The storms come in last night. Luckily, they didn't affect us. However, they did do some damage down south in Oklahoma, so prayers for all them. Um, today, we are going to be going down to the rock cabin and um, I'm not gonna film a ton I don't think but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some uh, cedar trim on uh, all around that building on the roof but uh, as far as uh, this morning it's already been pretty exciting I was getting up making coffee and everything sitting there drinking coffee and uh, thinking about what I was gonna do today for sure and I heard Cord and Liska Liesky going crazy and then all of a sudden Mojo kind of he makes a, uh, a weird bark and he gets up and he kind of trots through the yard and uh, I, I'll either play that footage right now or you've already seen it. I played it the first of this video. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. But look at this. Look at Betty and her kids. This is the trouble that we get into with these chickens. They like to go on the other side of the fence where they don't have no protection. And that is just where I was going with this story. I don't know what Skeeter's doing. So, yeah, I heard Cor and Lisky going crazy. And I could tell they were over here at this corner of their pasture. <clears throat> I can't go over here because the geese are too loud. And then Mojo gets up, so I knew something was going on. So I look out and kind of just watch. And I didn't grab a camera or nothing else. Because sometimes you just got to let the dogs do their thing. You can't just walk outside every time and yell and say, Hey, what's going on? Or, you know, you got to let them do their job because that is their instincts is to guard the animals well as soon as I walk out here I wasn't even dressed yet and it was pretty cold but I walk out around my truck and I could see there was a stray dog on the other side of the fence Gordon Leesky was like going crazy trying to jump the fence to get to that dog because it's not one that I have ever seen before from our neighbors um, some of our neighbors have some dogs and I'm not calling them stray dogs this is one I've never seen before but our dogs are used to our neighbors dogs you know, they come to the fence and they don't harm anything. Our dogs watch them all the time. They're always very aware, but you can always tell that difference in the bark from when it's something the dogs know and when it's something that the dogs are warning to, uh, hey, you better get out of here. This ain't your territory. But anyways, Mojo came out and uh, he rounded up the goats. They came kind of come away from the fence and then he just laid there right by the fence where that little dog was you know he was barking at it and he just kind of laid down said i'm gonna watch you it was just a small dog so he knew it wasn't a big threat but Cora and leesky if that dog would have got close to them it wouldn't be here anymore i'll tell you that all right let's go here and see these noisy animals before i load up the uh truck how you know little chicken nugget mama you started off with like 13 babies and now you only got well, there was four yesterday, now I see three. Where's the other one? Huh? Where's the other one at? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, look at this. Look at this. This is not a chicken egg. This is another duck egg. This one is very small. But this is the second one I found. And I can definitely tell it's a duck egg. The shell feels a lot thicker. And although this one is a lot smaller than the other one, it's definitely a duck egg. So, uh, how cool is that? I just found the uh, second duck egg that we've ever had on the farm while I was uh, videoing because I've been looking every day since I told you in the last video I found one out by the front yard. 
And I haven't seen any more eggs, so you just never know where they're gonna lay them. But this one you guys seen was laying right there by the gate. <laughs> these goofy ducks. So that is the ducks that are laying these eggs. Like I told you guys, the Cayugas. Hey, oh, Yosh. Look at this. The ducks laid an egg. No shit, I could either. Hey, ghost. Hey. You know, your egg. You know, girl. You know, Yosh. All right. So, um. Rachel and the kids are like, oh, you got to put that egg in the incubator. And I said, well, whoa, 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 slow down. You know, I want to raise some more of these Cayuga ducks. However, we are in November, pretty soon to be December, you know. Uh, by the time these eggs hatch, it would be December. Then we're going to be raising them and uh, in the shop. And these ducks grow so fast and they outgrow the brooder so fast that, you know, you really need to put them outside pretty quick. And there, if you, I know a lot of you have raised baby chicks. You know, chicks are, you know, they're kind of dirty. They stink and stuff. I wouldn't mind raising a few chicks in the in the shop. You know, if you raise more than 10 or so, it gets to be a mess. You know, we got big stock tank that we use for a brooder. Well, ducks, they grow, I'm gonna say like three to four times faster than these chicks do. And by a couple days old, they just want to play in the water. They make it just messy every day. You got to clean it out. And I, you know, it's just part of it. I'm not griping, it's just part of it. But in the winter time, it's not ideal. Um, ideal for me is to be able to raise these ducks in warmer weather to where when they hatch, you can raise them in the shop for, you know, a week or two until they get a little bit of their feathers growing out. And, you know, when the weather's a little bit warmer, you can put them outside and uh, raise them out there so it's not so quite messy. But I do want to raise some of these ducks. So hopefully uh, these ducks will quit coming in the yard so much. Every morning I get up, these Cayuga ducks are out in the yard just running around every once in a while. At 2 a.m. in the morning, I'll get a camera notification that ducks are going around the house. And um, if you guys remember, we used to have a lot more ducks. Well, Cora and Leesky does not do well with the birds any birds they just don't they've taken some of our chickens they've taken some of our turkeys look at this guy they've taken um, some of the Cayuga ducks so uh, if those ducks keep coming in the yard and they go out in that pasture it won't be good what do you know what are you doing up there man you're crazy this morning you already brought a shrew he, he already caught a shrew and brought it to the door to show us, bragging. And now he's up here on the swing set. You're goofy. You better not get stuck up there. He's been trying to catch squirrels. One thing that these cats do, I'm telling you, they have been catching chipmunks. Like they've caught like four chipmunks in the past month and they never get rid of them. They just bring them to the house play with them and they run around the back porch or the front porch whatever and then Rachel and I will have to go out and rescue it and take it back to the woods but I'm thankful that they don't um, you know kill them what do you dogs know what do you dogs know huh what you been up to so just an update um, we posted the video of where we lost the goat and the dogs you know we're eating on the leg whatever and I'm gonna report that we have not lost any more goats. We don't have any sick, and the dogs have not bothered or eaten any more goats. And uh, it's been several days now, so I'm gonna say it's safe to say that these dogs didn't kill that goat, and it probably died from the cherry trees, which I never could find any of the cherry trees out here because I think all the leaves already fell off of it. But what are you doing? Do you make a bed with all these leaves? Uh -huh. You make a bed. Hey, look what I found. Okay, I'm gonna have a talk with you. Yes, yes, yes. You can't have this one. This is a duck egg. This is a duck egg. I'm gonna show the kids the difference between duck eggs and chicken eggs. So, listen, I need a favor from you guys to not attack the ducks if they get out here in your pen. Because as soon as they see that big pond over there, they're gonna want to go to that. And two of them, the males were actually raised over there until you guys didn't like them over there anymore, so we had to move them to the other pasture. So we want to raise the coyote ducks on the farm, but we got to uh, we got to expand our numbers before we can just release the two males and the two females over here. Because if it doesn't work out with the dogs, then no more ducks 
no more eggs, we can't hatch no more babies. So that's where I was kind of going with, hopefully the ducks will stay in the yard. It's, you know, that's okay if they come in the yard a little bit, but hopefully they go back to the pasture and not the big pasture. So far they've been doing that and that's okay. Um, you know, ducks are wanderers. They're out in, they're in that pasture with nine big geese and geese and ducks are both waterfowl so sometimes the geese kind of intimidate them a little bit maybe maybe i'm not gonna say bully them but you know they're just bigger and although we have like four swimming pools out there or whatever if the ducks are having a great time playing around in one swimming pool then the geese are like oh they're having fun let's go bust their party then all nine of them go over there and then they run the ducks off and the ducks got to go to another pool so i can see they just kind of want to get some space from the geese and i think that's why they get out of that pen and come into the yard sometimes so uh yeah so leesky and core is doing awesome they haven't been bothering any of the goats no more goats have been sick or have died and look at this we got a herd of goats right here and then you got one way over there by itself it must have found some good uh good vittles to be eaten on We'll just watch it make sure it ain't got nothing wrong with it. Because goats are pack animals. They're not used to uh, staying by themselves. They don't like staying by themselves. <laughs> you can see it kind of walking up this way. It's like, guys, come on. I found some leaves to fall. And the leaves are still falling. So these guys still have tons and tons of food on the ground. So life is good for a goat right now. Even though... Um, daylight's getting shorter and shorter every day. The grass is kind of starting to go dormant. You know, there's still some green <clears throat> weeds and grass and there's still some green leaves, but a lot of this, these leaves are falling and the goats are just eating them up. So, uh, I guess that's enough rambling for now. I'm going to go start loading the truck up and, um, <laughs> I seen a piece of tape underneath my truck. Look at this. It looked like it looked like a cat's tail, and I knew it wasn't the cats because uh, I just seen them walk by. Do you guys see that flapping right there by those two uh, fuel filters? <laughs> I could just barely see it, and I was like, "What is that?" And hold on, I gotta tell you something. So I know I've told this story before, but I do not. I have never been a person that really liked cats. Well, a couple years ago, you know, in the winter time, once I got this new Kubota. The bigger one, I didn't use the old one quite as much because it just wasn't safe for the round bells and this big one just made it a lot easier and stuff like that. Well, so the old Kubota sat there for months and months and months over winter time. Well, you know, we store feed over here because we got a farm. We store feed. Well, what draws in to feed mice and rats? Well, a big giant rat was uh, stealing feed and it was storing it in the fan shroud in front of the engine on the small Kubota. Well, that sucker, the feed wasn't good enough, so it decided, I'm gonna chew on some wires. So it chewed on like four different wires, sets of wires, and then things quit working. I had to, I had to rewire a bunch of stuff. One day I went out there to fire up that Kubota and, and corn and feed just started going everywhere. It was all in that fan shroud. And when that, that engine started to crank over, that fan started spinning real fast and all that feed went everywhere and it just scared the far out of me. So I welcome the cats because the cats have been bringing mice. They've been bringing these big field rats up here and taking care of them and keeping them off the farm. So um, I'll welcome the cats. They, they're strictly outside cats, so they're farm cats. So anyways, that's a little backstory on that. So now, uh, the other day I cleared my truck out. I, you know, I was keeping all the tools because we were going back and forth to the uh, lake property. I got some more signs to put out I need to do. Anyways, I cleared all the tools out. So now I gotta load them back up. So I'll load up and then uh, we'll meet you guys down there at the rock cabin. Okay, change of plans. Um, I just talked about this goat being out here by itself. Before I start loading up and put my attention otherwise, I'm just going to walk out here for a peace of mind and make sure there's not something wrong with this goat. Um, you know, since we just lost the other one to what I think was the cyanide poisoning, I'm just going to come out here and make sure this one's not, you know, it's not, it's not out of normal for this goat just to be out here eating and get carried away and the other goats leave it. You know, that happens. So, let's make sure she's okay. 
She's a young goat, so she's acting a little different, but... What's wrong? Are you skittish? Did you get lost from the other goats last night? She looks wet like she was out here in the rain last night. Let's get back over there with your mama. Why is that goat out here by herself, huh? Or she just gets kind of stranded. <clears throat> These dogs, I swear. You can't, it's hard, to, it's hard to hold the camera and walk through this pasture when you got 200 plus pound dogs walking right in front of you wanting attention. So, <clears throat> what I was saying is it's not uncommon for these goats to find you know let's say a buffet of something they really like and you know the goats kind of spread out and they walk these fields and they're they're called browsers for a reason because they browse out things and you know they don't just settle for the grass they want the good nutritious weeds and the leaves and stuff like that so sometimes they'll they'll come into a big buffet of something and uh they might be by itself. They might just get carried away eating and then look up and then the whole herd's gone. And uh, goats will usually only do one thing or a couple things if they get lost from the others. Either they'll be smart and just kind of lay down and be quiet and observe to see where the other herd is. Or some of the not so smart ones will start bleating or start crying for the other herd. And, uh, and then... Uh, Okay, I, I'm trying to do this video and then I got cats doing this and doing that. Smeagol is just on top of that pole and he just jumped down. But yeah, I, um, I don't know about this goat. It looks perfectly fine to me, so I don't think nothing's wrong with it. Just wanted to make sure that there wasn't before I left because uh, that's how the other thing happened the other day. We were gone all day and when I got home, sure enough, there was a dead goat. But I think she's fine. Smeagol, you sure are distracting when I'm trying to video, man. We're gonna have to start playing Spot Smeagol in the background. <laughs> All right, I gotta go get the truck loaded, guys. Good boy. Okay, so we made it down here. And like I said, what we're gonna be working on today is just a little job, but it's very important. And that will be the trim that goes around the gable ends and the eaves of this whole building. And that will hide all these two by four lumber. And I'll show you what we're gonna go with. This is a one by six rough cut cedar piece of trim. So one side is actually planed. Both sides are trimmed to where they're straight, but they leave one side rough. And finding a 10 footer in this was not that easy to do, but that will cover all that stuff right there. And then it will come down here on the ends and cover all that as well kind of hide all your screws and stuff like that now when you're working with this thin cedar just cedar is a very soft dry this is kiln dried so it's dry it it will crack very easily so you can't just put your regular screws in here now you can if you want to use a uh, drill and pre-drill your holes and stuff um, sometimes you can get away with doing a uh, pneumatic nailer um, a lot of times you're still going to have splits in this stuff so what I got online and I ordered, I had a hard time finding these too, but these are a stainless steel 18 gauge staple, inch and a half. So I think this is five eight. So I'll have about an inch of staple going through this and then it will be going up into this two inch stuff. And this, this is pretty solid, this is pine. So it shouldn't have a problem holding it. And um, if I need to go back later, I can still pre-drill some holes and put some screws in there but once you do that you know you're gonna have a bunch of screw holes and it's gonna show up pretty bad on here now once this is up I've got something else I've got to do I've got some Thompson water seal this is the clear stuff and if you guys remember the woodshed I built at home I bought the Thompson's water seal and I actually got the cedar color which was like orange like a burnt orange color that's no good i don't like that color so we're just going to go with the clear keep it all natural and that should do a good job protecting it from the uh, elements and even though this is out there it's still going to have a drip edge over it and we'll show that later in the next video in the next phase of this roof so i get the camera set up i got my dad here helping me again it's a little bit windy it's like 45 degrees a little chilly morning but we gotta get this done so
Now, do we measure the bottom or the top? I'm just getting the length right now. That's about center right there. That's center? Yep. So to the outside edge of this board, that piece of trim I just nailed on, it's 118. Right, but if we go to the bottom, I'm going to do a center, center of the bottom. 118. What's 118? Two inches less than 10. I think. 10 foot's 120. That should be 10 foot. I think mean, it's a foot. Come on, come on. Supposed to be. It's right at it. Yeah, it's 10 foot. Here, hold it up there and let me see where. Be cut. Yeah, yeah, it'll be yeah. cut. We right? need to center at the top. So I got to center at the top. Yeah, I've got about about the bottom three quarters of that piece is just barely. There ain't really nothing I can do about it. Okay, so we got all the trim cut and stapled up there all the way around. Walk you guys around here if you can see. Right sun. And we had to splice some pieces because 10 footers was all I could find. You can see there's kind of a little bit of a color difference there, but we're fixing to stain it with that Thompson's water seal. So, let's see if you guys can see that. Let's walk on the road. And I think once we stain it, it should probably darken all of it up a little bit and kind of uniform the color to where it kind of blends in a little more because it's hard to find good pieces of this 1x6 cedar in the stores and when you find a good piece, all the tones, you know, they're cut from different trees and it's hard to find good pieces that match the same tones and when you got to splice some of the stuff like this, you can really tell it makes a difference. 
We just got done eating lunch. Mom brought us some uh, cheeseburgers and fries. And uh, just gotta get the ladder put back up and uh, get that Thompson's water seal and just start painting it on because I want this to last. I don't want to have to redo this again. And cedar is <clears throat> pretty much weather resistant anyways. But I kind of want to put that on there anyway just to kind of keep the sun from fading it so much and to give it maybe a little extra life and kind of uniform that color. So I'm just going to grab this right here and then I just want this little cup that I can hold on to up on the ladder and I'm just going to brush it on. So you guys don't need to see all that. You guys know what paint looks like. It's boring. So I probably won't show that. But uh, once I get done, I'll bring the camera back and show you the end result. Okay, sealing the cedar trim is done, and uh, my hands are a little sticky trying to do that in this wind up on a ladder. It's a little bit of a challenge, but no big deal. So let me show you guys what it looks like. I don't know if you guys can see with the sun glaring on it, but it really darkened up that trim big time. And like I said, there are several different pieces of it on here, so Gonna look a little different all the way around but there you go it's all sealed up i went around it two or three times and got several coats on it so should be good and sealed come out here on the end and take a look this piece i don't know if i can get out there or not let me show you guys where what i'm standing on look at this that is a that's probably a 25 foot drop right there at the bottom so i'm trying to be careful but you guys can see that piece right there just got super dark it almost looks like black walnut now but should last us a long time hopefully so the next phase of this roof rock cabin restoration will be to put the drip edge over the gable rake ends and then on the eaves then they'll put an ice and water shield down over the whole decking and then they'll put the roofing material down and it's a, it's not your standard roofing material it's not regular metal panels and it's not shingles so you guys will have to subscribe and stay tuned to find out what kind of roof material we're actually going to put on this thing it's a little bit different i've never seen any in person um, it's kind of a new thing that people are using now and uh, excuse me, just took a big drink of uh, some diet pop. <clears throat> so, anyways, that's where we stand with this. What are you doing hiding in there? <laughs> huh? I'm not. Dad's ready to go home and watch football. But, yep, that's what it looks like. So, like I said, uh, if you guys aren't subscribed and you're interested in seeing how this thing turns out, this is just the first phase of the restoration like i said getting the roof on to try to get this thing somewhat dried in that was the number one goal and it started with tearing off the old deck the old rafters that were rotten and uh, replacing it with regular true dimensional two by four rafters putting the zip board on and then the trim and then next after we get the roof material on we'll start replacing the windows there's three of those and then I gotta figure out something for that. I guess I'll measure that and see if I can just figure out like maybe a window or something. And then uh, the door will be the next thing too. I gotta start coming up with some kind of a uh, design for the door. I'm gonna try to make one myself. I don't know how well that'll turn out because this door isn't a standard height door and it needs to be an exterior door. Exterior door. <clears throat> and it's hard to find an exterior door that you can actually cut down to the height that we need. So I'm gonna try to make one. I'm gonna try to make it look hopefully a little bit rustic. Um, like I said, I am no carpenter by no means, but you know, we can usually figure things out and hopefully make it look good. So, and then up here, we gotta finish that too. Figure out what we're gonna do and uh, go from there. But anyways, I'm gonna wrap this video up. My hands are all sticky and I keep touching my camera. Like I said, I got that Thompson water seal all over my hands because as I was painting it, the wind was just blowing it and it's dripping everywhere. And uh, for those of you that were asking or ask 
uh, that was Thompson water seal. It's just clear, and that's what it looks like on this natural cedar. Um, I like it far better than that orange color cedar tint color that I bought the last time. So anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. We love you guys. Subscribe, like this video, leave us a comment. What do you think of the new trim? And we'll see you on the next video.